connect and there we go see i say it bam it happens you put it out in the universe that's how you try it put out what you want stick it in the universe and it comes back to you good morning everyone it is triumph tuesday and you know what that means we're going to pat ourselves on the back for all the goodness that we've done and things that we had to maybe have an obstacle and jump over to get to where we wanted and we triumphed Good morning, everyone. This is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Naughty Boss, Lady Canna, live from a grayer sky, Vero Beach, which doesn't normally happen, but the sun is, will be coming out. And I'm here with two sisters. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here, as always. My name is Janice, a.k.a. Wellness Diva 3.0. And yes, I am having an identity crisis with the hair thing going on, but it's all good. I just haven't had a chance to do anything with it. But with all that being said, you know, I've always said that if the worst thing I have to complain about is a bad hair day, I think I'm doing pretty damn good. You are. You're doing excellent. And I'm just sharing this on uh, my page so we can get there out there because... People, I am back. I am back on my normal Facebook. He he, that was interesting. Uh, 90 days, was it 90 days? Yeah, no, 60 days of no lives, 60 days of no advertising, and 30, another 30 days of no posting, which I could see what was going on in the world or whatever. And Someone for, uh, asked me actually the other day when I was chatting about it, and I didn't even realize that I was live yesterday. I actually did a couple, you know, sometimes I try to remember, okay, how many more days do I got left? And I know a lot of people are frustrated when they're sharing, they're feeling that they're being censored. And you are trying to kind of get your message or your word out or what you want to share. And these social medias are not cooperating because they have their rules regulations whatnot and a lot of the things and i i do agree that definitely you need rules in place you want to make sure that you're not inciting violence inciting panic in such a way that you know could could really be harmful to someone at the same token when you are an entrepreneur and you rely on social media how do you triumph over that pivot of not being able to post? So, of course, Lady Canna, Naughty Boss, figured it out. And I managed. I messaged people. I had to finagle a few different things to make sure that we could still have our live going on with two sisters. So I did pivot. And what did I learn from that? Because you know what? When you are in a situation where you're in, which we joke about Facebook jail or restrictions or whatever you want to call them, how do you pivot around them? And do you learn anything from them? And what I learned was it was a, a sense of relief that I, I, I was forced to, to back off. And it gave me more time to do research, to digest, my thought process on what I feel of what's going on in the country and how it does affect our health and wellness, because this is not, for those that think it is, this is not a political platform. However, we do know that outside, the outside world does impact our health and wellness, sometimes in a good way, sometimes not in such a good way. And while we are health, wellness, and mindset coaches, we want to also make sure that we are doing our dual due diligence to inform our listeners and viewers that the outside world sadly does impact our, our, our health and wellness. And how do we create a more conducive environment that our mindset and our health is not so impacted that it's taking over our lives? So while yes, we talk about hot topics, we would be boring if we didn't talk about hot topics because they're in our face 24 seven. And guess what? Does hot topics do impact our life? So I don't have any regrets. I still stand firmly in my beliefs, but it did give me time to pause and reflect. It gave me time to train in such a way to articulate in a different manner, to still get my point across, but make sure I'm not crossing those boundaries. And the hard piece to that is we don't always know, sadly, what Facebook, Instagram, what their boundaries really consist of because guess what they're not all rules don't apply to everyone 
So it seems that certain subjects and certain verbiage is okay for some people, but not others. And that is one thing that you have to adapt to. You're either going to get with the program and figure it out, or you're going to get angry and you're going to shut down. And I chose not to get angry. Was it frustrating? Absolutely, because I'm an entrepreneur. I do my business online. However, I also knew going into it that it could impact how I was going to go do, how I was going to go about my daily business of operation. And I still triumphed over it. So Facebook, yeah, you didn't get the best of me. What do you think about that, Jan Jan? Well, as always, I just want to touch on hot topics. When we went into this, and I always always go back to when we started the podcast, which just really happened, I want to say by accident. (laughs) And we came up with different theme days. And I am more subdued, which is okay. And that's why we balance each other out really well. And I would say that you're not as subdued. But with that being with that being said, when hot topics came up, I was like, oh, oh, no, no, oh, God, no, 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 no. And I would frequently, you know, when we get on the Zoom, we have a minute or two, oh, you know, it's Triumph Tuesday, we'll talk about this, this. And, but I always, <laughs> what I find funny about hot topics is whenever it came up, I would say before we went out, uh, I really don't want to talk about whatever, whatever. Well, we end up talking about it, which I think is kind of funny. I look back now and, and but hot topics is really, I want to say that we, we don't provoke. We don't provoke, yeah. but I, I think it's, if we are going to cover the gamut on how our outside world affects our health, that's certainly a necessity. Now I want to share this. Um, this is my third. Th- this morning was my third day back at um, in-house uh, at ILKV North Haven, and <laughs> I have to wear a mask. Which Lordy. I totally respect that. Yeah. I get it. Okay, my glasses were falling off. Uh, I almost stepped on and whatever, whatever. Um, and I was kind of laughing because, you know, you can set out to have the greatest intentions of doing something and not realizing what you're doing for yourself. So what do I mean by that? I was thinking about hot topics this morning as I'm a, my most, a lot of my creativity, a lot of times is sparked when my feet are hitting the red mat. And no, I am not upset that I don't have to do burpees. I'm okay with that. I can't do them yet. I will someday. But the point I'm trying to make is, and I know I'm kind of going about this in a roundabout way, is when you spark a conversation, when you spark different interests, different viewpoints, that is where the greatest of conversations is going to happen. So I am a firm believer now. I wasn't way back when, less than a year ago, uh, April. You know, oh, we just got to stick to this. Well, guess what? If you don't think outside the box on how everything affects your health, well, of course you're going to be. Think about that, the stress or the angst, whatever you want to call it, that builds up when you're thinking about a certain topic. Absolutely. And it it does impact our lives and we need to be able to be open and chat about it. Because I always think that when you have something to say that you know is going to impact, and it could just be in your mindset that you want to impact your mindset. I got to get it out. I got to, you know, you always have that feeling. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of our listeners and viewers have had that feeling where you you, you had something weighing heavy on your heart or it's something that was in your gut that you knew you just wanted to get off your chest. You know, that feeling that you just, you just got to get it out. And you need to do that in a healthy environment, a safe environment where you feel postured enough and the courage enough. Cause sometimes it does take courage for some people 
to be able to open up and, and either share their feelings, share how something's impacting them in a good way and or a bad way, and how to how to pivot. Because a lot of times we, we get messages from our viewers and they ask us those sort of questions. Well, how do you deal with you know, A, B, and C because I'm struggling with that? Or I don't have the same amount of courage that you do to speak my convictions. And I always say it's better to get things off your chest. Always try to put a pause in it. And I'd rather have the verbiage come out because then you actually hear the tone. You hear the, the message from a verbal aspect being the keyboard warrior and or the keyboard bully because you don't hear the inflection of someone's voice. You don't hear the tone. You don't hear, uh, because a lot of times we bring a lot of humor into serious conversations because we also believe that humor and laughter is a key piece to health and wellness. So there's all aspects of our life that kind of intertwine, make us who we are, but also impact our health and wellness in a good way and or a bad way. And we have to be able to have a safe forum. And I hope that's what Two Sisters has been doing is, is a safe forum because it's not about, we don't want just like-minded people to agree. We want others to say, hey, I disagree with that. Okay, well, let's hear it. Let's chat about it. And that's how, like you said, Jan, you get that good conversation going and you realize more often than not, then people do have a lot more in common than they do not have in common when you really get to the heart of whatever it is that you want to chat about. And whether you like it or not, the outside world, even though we always chat about it, we're never in control of it. We are only in control of our words, our actions, and how we reflect on and or interact and or react to something. We can't control what's going out there, but that doesn't mean just because we can't control it, that we can't chat about it and show and talk about how it's impacting us as a human race, as a human being, as a family, as a mom, a dad, a nanny, an auntie, whatever it may be, a mom and dad. Those are things that do truly do impact us. And when we allow that conversation to open up, we become better. You know how many times I've heard that, I'm trying to think of the same, when you're, you're holding something in and it kind of just eats away at your heart it eats away at who you are and i always say doesn't it feel good to get it out even if it doesn't come out the correct way maybe it comes out with marbles maybe it comes out with missteps or missed words you can always backtrack that with a, i'm sorry ooh, that didn't come out right or oh i didn't word it that way but at least it came out and then the conversation's open so i do believe there is something to say about definitely about rules and regulations and following but also pivoting a way that you can still get the word out and you adapt, you find out that you're more resilient. Now I could have, you know, been kind of cut off from social media to a certain degree. Obviously I use my Instagram more and I try to balance the two anyways. I could have just said, oh, give it up, hang it up, Carol Sue. I can't get my message out. Well, I found ways to do that, but I also learned that I have to articulate in such a way that I can still do it, but I'm kind of skirting around the issue a little bit so I don't get flagged. But I thought it interesting to flag someone small like me in the gamut of big things. And I think once you're flagged, you're flagged. Now, we also know that these fact checkers are fact check. I think most of them actually, someone did a poll on it. Most of them are actually out of California, which I found interesting. Some are just husband and wives with no fact-checking experience. They're just keyboard bulliers and or warriors, however you want to look at it, that fact-check only segments of whatever the statement is. Now, there is a way with social media, once you've been flogged, how do you triumph over that? You can um, send in a submission to social media and say, I don't agree with this, and this is the reasons why. So there is some recourse for you. Could I have done all that? I could have, but I just said, you know what? I'm going to take it because I knew, I knew that chance I was taking and I didn't have a problem with it because I needed, I needed to make sure that those things were heard. And some of the things that I was flagged over were totally ridiculous and should have never been flagged. 
but I wasn't going to waste my energy or time going up against someone behind a keyboard that I don't know, that I'm not having that conversation where they could hear my voice and articulate and we're going back and forth. Because we know a lot of times with messaging and or emails, the actual point is not even taken for what it is. And sometimes we think too much with our brain and not actually read and articulate exactly the way that it was meant to, or we do it, but it's received in a different way. And you can't control that. No, you can't. And I just want to go back to um, where you were chatting about, you know, the inflection in our voices. And I think that is so important. And I'm going to use an example. And, and, and I, I will just say up front, it's not a pretty example. Go for it. <laughs> Kaylee McEnany, Jen Saki. Now, two big differences in my opinion. When Kaylee McEnany was at the podium, there was confidence and assurance in her delivery. Jen Saki does not have that. Compare the two inflections in their voices. You know, maybe look up on YouTube or whatever. There's all sorts of different clips out there. Somebody that knows their stuff and somebody who I think is really trying hard. I do believe that. And I can't even imagine what it would be like to be in Jen Saki's shoes. And she's constantly compared to previous uh, speakers. Well, let's face it. She's got big, she has big shoes to fill because Kay, Kaylee, not, you know, confidence, but very postured, postured mm -hmm. in her stance was always very well uh, abreast of whatever subject came up and, or very well prepared. You would frequently see her actually doing more, more activity than not, where she's taking in a question, she's answering it at the same time. She's looking at references to make sure that she's referencing and or answering correctly. That takes someone that you know, has to have a very quick mindset and the ability to, um, to multitask. I don't think that Jen Saki, and I always mispronounce her name. I'm not even sure if that's the correct way to pronounce it, has that finesse. She doesn't have that posture. And I truly believe it's not that she can't ever get to it. You hope, you never wish, regardless of, a difference of opinion, viewpoint, administration. You never wish anyone to not be successful. So of course you don't wanna see people failing. I don't, I truly don't. Even though we have definitely a difference of opinions on mm -hmm. political issues, I never wanna see anyone fail. However, I hope for her sake or her marketing team, whoever is surrounding her is encouraging her to take some speech lessons to, and I think the best way to learn posture is to practice. So get into a room that's very similar or hey, go to that room and when no one's around and actually mock a press briefing with questions coming out, so understanding how to think on your feet, which you can learn that. These are all things that you can learn and make sure that you have proper notes I disagreed when it came out that I believe a request came out about they wanted questions and things ahead of time. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not how the press secretary operates and or delivers the message of what the administration is doing. And it's the, it's the journalist, although the journalists in the room are questionable, let's be real, it is their job to ask the pressing questions. What I do find funny about that, and I think this is why people have tuned them out, because when you watched the previous administration, when they did a press conference, you left there feeling that she knew what she was doing, but also you actually got answers. And probably 
more accurate information, even though it might, might have been things that people didn't want to hear and or, you know, you watch the challenge, kind of the, the, the tugging war between media and her. Here, with the current administration and Jen in that same role, you don't get the back and forth. There's a few journalists that will do a follow-up and, and press hard, but I think they're going pretty easy on her. She delivers a very curt response. But when I say curt, because you can be postured in curt, and then you could seem and be apparently weak in curt. She's very weak in curt. Like, I, I don't know how to answer this. And she comes off as very snarky. And a lot of times when you come off snarky, that's really showcasing your inability of confidence in what you're actually saying. So let's come up with a snarky comment to divert from actually answering the question. So I think there's a lot of that going on. And what I love about it is, because those are one of the things that does impact me emotionally from like, I'm getting aggravated. So I tune it out. You know, I don't, I have not really watched her. I watch little clips on Dan Bangino. I absolutely love his podcast. Mm -hmm. And when I listen to different podcasts as, as much as you do, you want to embrace and, and listen to people that add value and you leave there better, either knowing something more knowledgeable and, or you feel good after. And I think that's one of the things that has taught me over these last 60 and 30 days is that I don't want to put myself in a situation where it, it fires me up in such an angered way because that's not healthy. It, it's, it's not good for me. It's not good for my listeners. It's not good for, for us as uh, business partners. And I just found that it was, it, it was such a, a relief to kind of like take a step back and say, okay, I can still do and share my passion and, and, and be, and we can still be informative, but just to do it a little different way. And, and I just feel so much better for that. And I hope people, uh, our listeners and our viewers and our audience or anyone that just kind of stumbles across us realizes that don't get so sucked into what they're trying to suck you in. I think Facebook, Instagram, all social medias, as well as media has an obligation that they know that they're sucking their viewers in, rightfully so. That's what they're out there for, right? I mean, they're out there to, to, to get listeners and viewers. But when they play havoc on your mindset, when they play havoc, when you leave there and you're like, Ooh, and you're kind of stressed out about it. And that's what I listen to her. She just like, I don't get, I don't, I wouldn't say that I get stressed out watching her. I, I actually think I feel sad. It's just a kind of a sad thing to watch. Well, it's almost, it's almost sad. It's definitely sad. And I, I do feel bad for her because I think the potential is there. But speaking of snarky. Ooh, somebody snarky. Let's, let's talk. Oh, my goodness. So CNN. Oh, Lord. Corrupted News Network. <laughs> had a clip of the governor's brother, Chris Cuomo, he has a, a show on CNN. I think it's from like two to three, whatever time frame it is. But the clip was of him acknowledging what's going on with his brother. So this is the younger brother. The younger brother, Chris, okay. Chris Cuomo, who I talk about a lot and I'm not a big fan of him, but I do watch him because I want I, I like to know what other especially people that I don't particularly care for. That's where I learn a lot as well. And oh, yeah. I do more digging. But anyways, it was about a 44 second clip. And he acknowledges, you know, obviously, because people, you know, he works at CNN, he has his own show. And he basically said that he was not going, he realizes what's going on with his brother, and he's not going to cover it. Um, but rest assured, and he thanked his viewers for watching his particular show, but rest assured, CNN will, will cover it. Now, I have to give him some credit there. And we all know he's not going to get much credit from me. <laughs> but I have to give him credit for acknowledging what is going on. I can't even imagine being in that situation 
and your name is out there all the time you're an anchor on this network and like how do you go forward and i have to say that in his delivery he was he definitely was heartfelt i have to give him that i have to give him credit where credit is due he's an actor <laughs> but there's always a but okay but yes i i do think that he should cover it that's just my opinion in some form or fashion uh, again i give him kudos for acknowledging but to say that you're not going to cover it because he's your brother where i, I always go back to journal integrity is that journal integrity no i think it's a brother covering a brother you know, th and throughout the pandemic, there are little conversations, you know, cutesy and, hey, you haven't called mom, you know, you need, to, uh, you know, whatever. I think that's the actual key piece to it all, because if you're going to take on that role where you're both in two different professions, and by the way, I think this whole Cuomo is a sidebar. I think it's a deflection of what's going on in DC. And that's all I'm gonna say on that piece. It's a distraction. Now, I'm not saying that none of it is true or that any of it's false. What I am saying is it's a total distraction. But the point being when they, when you, you took, if in fact he never ever had him on a show, he never uh, had like have him as a co-host. If none of that ever happened, then he didn't even need to make a statement as far as I'm concerned. I think the launch, the line should have already been drawn way before we're at the current status that we are right now. But because you did have him in good times, then guess what? Not that he could come on and speak his mind because I'm sure he's gonna be lawyering up or whatever they do in, in these kind of legal situations. But because you already went you already used your position to propaganda basically his crap, his book, what he was doing in New York, the nursing home in the beginning. Because you already stepped over the line, now to backtrack it now because it's he's in the limelight again for a whole flip side of what's going on. That's where he does not have any integrity in my book. I don't, I, I, I disagree. I respectfully disagree. I do not think he gets any kind of kudos for acknowledging it because of the fact that he already, he already had him on a show several times, as you pointed out. What he, and I'm sure part of that could have been, you know, who knows whether his boss was directing him on what to say or what not to say. What he could have said was, Obviously, it's pretty obvious my brother is under investigation. Therefore, because I am his sibling, I cannot in good conscience, because he's my brother, I would have more respect for that than whatever he, from what he said, from what you're saying. That would have been more impactful. Look, he's been on my show. Yeah, everyone knows that we're brothers. Uh, he is, he, he, I stand by him. However, because of, the relationship and the network's stance, I cannot have him on my show or I will not be commenting on it for not fear, but I do not want anyone to think that it, obviously I'm gonna, it's my brother. That's realistic. That's being authentically him and that's being heartfelt. I think the other way, he skirted around the issue, especially was already a guest too many times to count. But, you know, I, I it, it is what it is. And so hopefully, like I said, I think the whole thing's a distraction anyways. But let's change the subject a little bit to Triumph Tuesday. I want to give a couple shout outs. There's been, you know, we, we, we always talk about our different viewers and, you know, we always give different shout outs. So I want to... I've got two new viewers that I want to give some heartfelt prayers to. Uh, the first one is Sus Susanna, a gal that I met through 
we have a Facebook group called the Vero Beach Vibe Tribe, and she is in an unimaginable pain right now. Her son passed away unexpectedly, so she had to drive from Florida to Pennsylvania, and no parent, I'm not going to go into the details, but no parent should ever have to bury their their child it is such a heart-wrenching and from what i understand we actually were chatting last night he was she was they were just best friends she adored him had and he served our country and you know had some some difficulties and it's just a, such a painful experience and she she said oh i can't find two sisters i i'm going through his journals and she was telling me some of the things that he wrote that were so impactful that are certainly going to as hard as they are going to help her through this unimaginable journey so she said oh my god i love watching the two of you, you crack me up and it really just adds laughter in a really hard time so shout out to suzanne and her family we are saying prayers that rest assured that he's in a uh, he's with god and and he's at peace and the second person I want to shout out was Liz, one of a uh, of, uh, pickleball player that I've had the opportunity to meet and play with. And she is going under some, some serious medical issues at this time. So we want to say prayers to her. I know she uh, was wanted to know how to, how to reach us. And, you know, we never know who we're going to impact. You know, we talk about health and wellness. We talk about politics. We talk about what's going on in our world. The funnies, a lot of times our conversation goes to the toilet. You know, we, we sometimes it just ends up in the shitter. That's just how, just how we roll. But to know that we are reaching out to so many people, whether it's to put a smile on their face, whether it's to impact them in a wealthy way, in a healthy, wealthy way, because wealth has a gamut of meanings. But today is Triumph Tuesday. What are you triumphing over? What little thing? Because triumph could be small, could be medium, could be big. It's the fact that you've got to it. Now, it could be an emotional triumph. It could be a physical triumph. It could be, oh, my God, I went my planner and I've got all these things like checked off all the boxes. I triumph today. So whatever you are triumphing over, give yourself that pat on the back. Too many times we forget to congratulate ourselves don't you think jan oh absolutely you know it's those little things and sometimes you may have to break it down and that's okay you know just no don't put that stress on yourself that i have to get everything done you'll fall into breaking it down into bite-sized pieces that you're comfortable with and i forgot to mention this is March, obviously. It is Women's History Month, I believe. I don't know that. You know what? I haven't heard that. Yes, I did see it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And April is Stress Awareness Month. So that one I knew. I knew about April because we've got some really good, good conversations that we already kind of got in our heads and that we're writing down that will will be so impactful. But I did not know. It was, women, what is it, Women's Health Month? No, History. History. Oh, well, this is good. Women's History Month. I, why did I not know this? I'm Googling it right now. See, we do this right on the air because we want to make sure. When March, yes, March is Women's History Month, commemorating and encouraging the study, observance, and celebration of the vital role Americans women have played in Americans' history. How cool is that? Wow. I did not realize that. Um, thank you. And I hope our viewers uh, knew that. And if not, guess what? You're finding out just like me. Thank you, Jan. That's awesome. You're welcome. I would love to see our viewers and our listeners message us on maybe someone that they admire in women's American history that has impacted America and and maybe share why they admire them. And I think I'm gonna do the same. I think that's a great idea. And maybe we can kind of segue into the, that. Every day, um, not every day March. Well, not tomorrow. We have a guest tomorrow. Yes, we that do. a little difficult. But yeah, we will definitely start to, who, who out there? There's somebody uh, that has inspired you, a woman who inspired you in, in history. Who is that person? And why did they inspire you? I think that's 
I think that's pretty awesome. I love that idea. I love that idea. So what do you got going for the rest of your day, girlfriend? Well, Xfinity is coming over. We're having a router change. So I'm getting all my stuff done beforehand. There you um, go all sorts of awesome things. And obviously we'll be doing something with my hair very shortly. It's all good. I have a hair appointment today, speaking of hair. So yes, I'm excited about that. You know, I got to freshen up the look and I'm going to get some exercise in. The sun finally came out. You know, you never know in Florida, the, the sky just, like literally changes on a dime here. One moment it's cloudy, the next bright blue skies, maybe a little intermittent clouds. But of course, I'm going to get some some of my pickleball on because I absolutely, absolutely love that. I'm starting to feel some toning of the arms, which I'm great. Oh, okay, here's a funny. So John and I, of course, he I always talk about he usually plays on the north side. I'm on the south side. The south side's more for beginners and intermediates. The north side, we call it the dark side, is more, you know, the pros are playing there and those that are really very, very competitive. So I said to John, well, why don't you warm up, you know, play, play the first game with me. We did this together. We started out together and you're on one side and I'm on the other. So we played our first game that we, we hadn't played in a while. We won, but the funny thing was we had, we had won a point and I started to walk backwards because it was my serve. He was walking behind me. And, you know, as I'm stepping back, I, I, I tangled up my foot with his foot and Lord and behold, you know, fell on the court, legs in the air, skirt, flap, you know, whatever. But, you know, what I did was, which I was smart, because I, I know it's every time I fall now, I almost think that it's in slow-mo and I'm preparing myself. So the, the fat of my my hand right here is where I I brace myself because I know oh, this, 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 this bitch is going down. So literally on the court, Everyone, uh, and John was, you know, nervous. He said, Did you hit your head? No, no, I didn't. I didn't hit my head. I'm fine. Let's game on. Let's go. And we ended up winning. And um, so it, it was an interesting way to start out, but I had, uh, I think, good six or seven good games. And I love the sport because there's a social aspect of it, obviously, but the movement. Um, the hips, the legs, the arms, and I'm really starting to feel, you know, stronger that way. So I encourage everybody on this Triumph Tuesday, I am challenging you to try to do a little something that maybe you haven't done in a while and or that you've never done before, because you're going to find out when you do it. And then you're going to realize I could do this. That's a triumph. And that's when you should be patting yourself on the back. Good job. I love you. Don't forget to look in the mirror and remind yourself how good you are. Pay the kindness forward. And that's what we love doing. We love sharing all that with you. So with that, this is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Nani Boss, Lady Canna, live from a brighter sky, Vero Beach with two sisters. And hey, everyone, my name is Janice, a.k.a. Wellness Diva 3.0 from a very chilly North Haven, Connecticut on the circle. It's all good. Triumph Tuesday. What are you going to triumph over? We'd love to hear from you. And we will see you tomorrow. We'll be on a little later. I believe it's at... Uh, 11, 10 or 11. Let me double check. Tomorrow we are on actually at 1 p.m. Oh, 1 p.m. See? I didn't look. 1 p.m. There so we go. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.